So in this lesson, we are going to tackle the concept of or probability. You should remember or probability from Algebra 2. Um, we did talk about it kind of briefly towards the end of the class, um, but we'll review it here. And we're going to actually use a new strategy that I didn't teach you at the time, which is using something called a two-way table, which we have talked about in this class. But using tables actually makes or probabilities very, very straightforward. So you'll see how that works as we jump in. Now, when we do probability questions, um, we talk about or and and in Algebra 2, and I didn't use these symbols with you at the time, but maybe you've seen them before, like in a geometry class or something like that. We have what's called the intersection and the union. Intersection is this little symbol right here. Looks like an upside down U or an N. And then union is this symbol right here, which is like a U. U for union should be pretty easy to remember. Intersection has like an N in it. And I think I make a note about that at the bottom for you guys too. But you can, one way you can look at these is through a Venn diagram. The intersection of A and B is what they both have in common. The intersection of a road is where the two roads meet. So the intersection is what they share, this part right here in green. And the union, when you unite two things, you put them together, and it's all of the stuff that you see in either one of them or in both of them. So intersection works very naturally with the concept of and in probability. You need A and B, and it's this part in the middle. Union goes right along with the concept of or probability, this or this or both. So Venn diagrams can be a helpful way of visualizing this stuff, um, and we'll talk about them a little bit. I personally don't care for Venn diagrams a whole lot. I'd rather use a table, but I'm going to show you how they work so you're at least familiar with them. And there's the little hints, U for union, N for intersection. So let's look at a data set here, um, which is looking at a two-way table of gender versus whether or not your ears are pierced. And there's a bunch going on in this slide right here. First of all, the two strategies you can use for problems like this, where you've got multiple events, usually we're gonna focus on two events at a time. Here we have gender and then ear status. We want to either analyze them in a two-way table, which we've done before, back in chapter one, or in a Venn diagram. Personally, I like two-way tables a lot better I find that when I make Venn diagrams, I have to like think really hard about where everything goes and I spend too much energy just making the thing. And then even when I make it, I get confused. So I like tables better, but Venn diagrams are perfectly good if you like them too. So what you would do, the two events that we care about in this problem are gonna be, we have our two variables of gender and pierced ears, but our events that we're establishing are male and pierced ears. A is male, B is pierced ears. So this yellow circle right here is all the males. You can see in this problem that there are 90 of them and they're broken into the ones who don't have pierced ears and the ones who do. Because B is pierced ears and these 19 people have both things, so they're in the middle right here. Then with pierced ears, if you look at these, there's 103 of them all together. There's the 19 that are male and then there's the 84 that are female right here. And you'll also, in a Venn diagram problem, have the number where neither of these things applies. So those are going to be females without pierced ears, evidently, um, and that would go on the outside of the circles. And you can look at each of these events right here. The little intersection symbol basically means and. So this is A and B, male and pierced ears, A and not B, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can look at those and analyze that. Venn diagrams are great if you like them, but I don't care for them. So I will usually opt to make a table instead of a Venn diagram when I analyze these sorts of probabilities. So if two events are mutually exclusive, this is our addition rule for or probability. In algebra two, I would have told you guys that or means you add up your probabilities. If they're mutually exclusive, it means that they don't overlap. There's no overlap possible. And if I want to know the probability of A or B, or AP stats will use the union symbol for it, so they're kind of interchangeable, and you got to be able to use both. All you do is you add up your probabilities, and you're done. Like we did in the last problem with the AP scores, three or four, you add them together, and you're done. But a lot of times in real life, events are not mutually exclusive. In other words, they overlap each other. So if they overlap, what you're gonna do 
you still need to add your two probabilities together. But after you do that, you have to subtract out the stuff you double counted. The stuff you double counted would be A and B, the intersection. So what this means right here is that you have to subtract the overlap. This formula is on your formula sheets written just like this on the first page. So you'll have that there, but hopefully this is something that you can just remember and not have to look up because we use it quite a lot. Let me quickly show you on our last example what that would mean. Um, we're back on my little table right here, my little Venn diagram or whatever. If I wanted to find the probability of male or pierced ears, I would add up male, I would add up pierced ears, but then I would be double counting the males with pierced ears. So what I would need to do to offset that is I would subtract out these 19 people that I double counted. Because if I did all the males, that's 90, all the pierced ears, that's 103, that's going to be too much. I double counted this 19 or just add these three separate numbers, which are mutually exclusive and get your answer. Generally, I don't even mess around in AP stats, or I would advise you not to mess around with the formula because you can use a table that makes the problems so much easier. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up. So in this problem right here, fresh example, we're looking at home ownership versus whether or not you're a high school graduate. So we have two events that we care about here and they don't define them for us. I'm gonna go ahead and put letters just so um, I can not have to write out the words every single time. So G is gonna be that you're a high school grad. And then O is gonna be that you're an owner, like you own a home. So with the two-way table, we're gonna have two events and it doesn't really matter which one goes each way. I'm gonna make grad go this way. So I have high school grad and I would have not a high school grad, the little compliment symbol. And then I would have home owner and I would have not a home owner. And then what I'm gonna do is break the problem up, the numbers in here, and put them in the different boxes. It says there's a random sample of 500 people. The grand total usually goes bottom right outside the box like this, kind of like a marginal distribution where you put it on the outside. And then what I'm gonna do is start filling out the problems with the numbers they give me. 340 people were homeowners. Owners, this and this together are homeowners. There's 340 of them. Uh, there are 310 high school graduates, and it says 221 were both homeowners and high school graduates. So the way these problems usually work is they'll give you the outside numbers. They have to give you at least one on the inside for the problem to be possible. So there's 221 that are both right here. And once you know that, you can just start subtracting things like these add up to 500. This would be a 190, so you get 500. I can do 310 minus 221, and that'll get me that box, et cetera. So basically, you just do math now, and you can fill out the whole inside of this picture. So it'll be a 71, I think that's 119, but I don't wanna screw it up. Yes. So you get your whole inside filled out. Takes a tiny bit of effort, to set up a little two-way table, but once you have it, you can answer all sorts of probability questions super quickly. So what I'm gonna do is leave my little table right there and I'm gonna tab over to the next page. So what's the probability you're a high school graduate? Graduate was G. So you're a high school graduate if you're here or here. That's actually just the 310 and they actually straight up told us that in the problem. So that's not very exciting. That's gonna be 310 out of 500. And you could make that into a decimal. I think that's 62%, that's not that bad, but you don't have to. You can also just leave it as a fraction. Honestly, AP test usually doesn't even care if you reduce or not. So don't stress yourself too much over that. Unreduced fraction decimal if you want it is cool. All right, next problem says that they are not a high school graduate. So not a graduate is gonna be these guys right here. And they own a home owns a home is here. So not graduate and a home is gonna be these people in my table. So I have 119 people who qualify out of the 500 total, and then you can make that into decimal. I'm not even gonna bother with this one. So we just have my answer right there, okay? 
This next one is where the whole table thing is actually going to help us. Because so far it's been kind of just like looking at the picture and it's not that difficult to do. Um, but with this last one here, they're finally asking us about an or probability. And when they bring an or probability, this is where the two-way table kind of shines for us. So our two events that we care about is, is a high school graduate or they own a home? Now you could do the high school grads, which was I think 310, plus the homeowners, which is 340. If you do that, that's already over 500 and you'd have to subtract out the ones you double counted, subtract out the 221 and you would get your answer. But if you have a table, the tables are already separated. So each box on the inside is mutually exclusive. If you're a grad and a homeowner, you're not a grad and a not homeowner. You can only fit into one of these boxes right here. So if you take the time to make the two-way table, all you need to do is just circle up all the stuff you care about. High school grad, okay, that's you, that's you. Or homeowner, well, I already circled that one, so I'm not gonna do that again. But this is also a homeowner right here. And if you add these guys straight up, you will get your answer for the problem. Always good to show work of some fashion. If you add those up, I think that's 429 out of your 500. So if you make a table, you don't have to worry about subtracting out the double counting because it's separated so there is no double counting. Or you can use the formula if you prefer. Either way, it's kind of up to you what you do. You could even use the Venn diagram if you want to do that. So we have one more example right here with a bunch of parts to it. Fresh problem. We have 60% of households in the U.S. with a landline phone, and I bet that's gone down since 2012, and 89% with cell phones, 51% have both. So our two events in this problem that we care about, we have L is that they own a landline, and then we have, I'll do C for cell phone. It doesn't really matter what letters you choose, that's just as long as you define it. And in my little two-way table right here, I'm gonna have L, I'm gonna have not L, I'm gonna have C and I'm gonna have not C. This time they didn't give me raw numbers like the last one, they gave me percentages. So if they give me percentages, then obviously the total is gonna be out of 100% or one. So it says 60% had landlines. So 60% landlines, that means this is already gonna be a 40% right here. 89% had cell phones, so 11% go here. And it says the number on the inside is that 51% have both. Once you know a number on the inside, you just start subtracting and doing easy math. And you just set up your problem, basically. And it's pretty straightforward getting this all filled out. So I've got all my inside numbers. And that took a little bit of work in the first place to get it all ready. But once it's there, it's really easy to answer a bunch of probabilities pretty quickly. So it says for part B, find the probability that the household has at least one of the two kinds of phones. So again, all you need to do if you took the time to make a table is circle the stuff you care about. That could be this one or this one. Those are both cell phones. Or it could be this one over here. So you just add up these three boxes or you could also do the complement and subtract out the one thing you don't want. However you set that up, you're gonna end up getting the answer of 98% for this problem. So it's pretty quick to get that answer. Let's go on to the next page and answer a few more quick probabilities here. I'm gonna keep my little picture. Next up, find the probability that the household has neither type of phone. Well, actually I just identified that in the last one. That's gonna be this box right here. You don't have a cell phone and you also don't have a landline, that's just the simple 2%, really no work to show there to get that answer. And then finally, find the probability this house is a cell phone only. When it says cell phone only, there's like that, that implication there that they have a cell phone and they also don't have a landline. So that is actually just gonna be this box, cell phone and no landline, which is just 38%. So when you're dealing with more complicated probability, where it's not just a very simple, quick answer, a two-way table is a great technique for organizing probability and making it pretty easy to compute.